Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this video, we are going to see current affairs of 18th August 2023. So let's get started. So first we are going to see brief introduction regarding the topics so that you can understand from which subject point of view which article is important and if it is important from prelims point of view, I will be telling you that so that you can also make a notes. So please keep pen and a paper with you so that you can jot down the important points that you find. And we are also going to see the key analysis regarding the topic from all the dimensions. And I will be also saying that which point is important from mains point of view or not. And next one is we are going to see Hindu newspaper PDF at last so that you can have a look over that also. And if there is any article which is relevant, so we will be also seeing that there. So first topic is about gaps in birth and death registration amendment act. So recently, so this birth and death registration amendment bill introduced in the parliament in the monsoon session. And finally, this bill passed in the both houses that is in Lok Sabha and in Rajya Sabha. And finally, president also gave the assent. So after president gave assent, so this bill will become an act now. So this article which is talking about what are the gaps? There is nothing but what are the concerns regarding this births and registra deaths registration act is seen. So this topic is important from polity and governance point of view. So here you have to see what exactly the key highlights of this act and what are the gaps. So what is the significance, right? So this topic is exclusively important from your means and students who are going to write this year means you have to focus on the recent bills passed in the houses. Don't forget about this. And this one is world choice in data protection law and dilution of rights. So here you have to focus on digital, digital personal data protection act. So this bill that is digital personal data protection bill also passed in houses and it got assent and finally it became into act. So yes, we got data protection law in India. Jai Hind, right? So yes, finally, from 2017 onwards, we are trying a lot to get this data protection act in our country. So finally and finally, we got this data protection act now in India. So it is going to protect data, right? So this article is important from polity which comes in the GS paper 2 and next topic is fighting stereotypes. So this article I found very very interesting because gender stereotyping is seen everywhere right. So the first step now taken by judiciary so this is a milestone that I can say. So recently CJI he released one handbook regarding the language that used to be that need to be used in the courts. So this uh, handbook can be used by judges and as well as lawyers and they have to use this language whenever they are addressing the cases such that there should be no gender stereotyping seen in the proceedings in the court. So this article is important from society point of view. So because of this gender stereotyping, so transgenders are present in our society. So they are facing issues like discrimination. So they will be sending out from the jobs and even they will be not getting access to the healthcare. Even this transgenders, they are not getting access to the employment opportunities and even in the education also. So they are facing a lot of issues. And not only regarding the transgender, if you see male and female, so whenever they are going to office, so they are not having the equal status so there is discrimination between men and women right so because of this yes in our society we can see there is gender stereotyping so this article is important from your society point of view because it is the first step taken by judiciary to end gender stereotyping right and this article it is one of the most favorite of mine in this newspaper in this today's newspaper and next topic is noble intentions. So this article is talking about PM Vishwakarma scheme. So in recent Prime Minister's speech in, on Independence Day, that is Independence Day speech of Prime Minister, he made a note on this uh, Prime Minister Vishwakarma scheme. So it is mainly helping the artisans, 
right so here why this artisans are important and why government need to protect this artisans or why government need to come up with these schemes so i will ask you one question so what is occupation of your parents and grandparents please let me know so actually if your father is a craftsman like weaver or goldsmith whether you are doing the same work no so now you are preparing for ups examination or other state service examination and you want to get a government job but no one want to continue the job which is done by which was done by your grandparents or your father etc right so what happened so if next generation is not doing this work so there will be death of the skills death of rt crafts so because of this your government is promoting promoting this traditional rt crafts so this topic is important from your governance point of view which comes in the gs paper too and next topic is drones to monitor progress quality of assets produced at this mg narega work sites so do you know about this mg narega yes of course you might know about this because if you are following current affairs or reading newspaper so each and every day you will be seeing this article regarding this mg narega so mg narega is nothing but mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so we came up with this act in year 2005 and it will be ensuring 100 day of 100 days of compulsorily work in the unskilled work especially in the rural areas so they will be going for laying of roads and they will be going for creation of assets in the rural areas so what happens so every every time there will be lot of complaints will be re received regarding this mg narega work sites because one thing i saw here is uh, one of my relative he is working under this mg narega as a supervisor and i have i think i should not tell this but honestly i'm say, i'm saying i'm saying this thing which i saw recently and that came into lame light recently that is so that person he included our other relatives into that scheme so they are normally wage earners so even though they are not going to work side they are getting the salaries so here like this so there are number of frauds are happening in this mg narega scheme like if there is any contractor is there means so they are laying up standard roads and they are getting the funds from the government and even people they are not uh, going to the working sites but they are getting the salary and even whatever the assets they are creating the quality of these assets are not up to the mark and even there is no proper monitoring so even though we came with the mobile apps regarding the attendance purpose so they are having lot of issues like lot of uh, lot of issues like there is no uh, network issue there is no proper network or internet and even some people they do not have the proper fingerprints like that so because of this there are lot of issues that are going on like we can say there are technical glitches so now here we are going to use drones so here this is the one of the new application of drones that is drones now can be used for the monitoring of progress monitoring of attendance and as well as quality of assets which are produced under this mg narega scheme so this topic is important from your science and technology and if you are talking about this drones which comes under your gs paper to under governance and next one is flood forecast app so now especially in the northern part of our country there is northern india which is playing which is also facing this issue called as floods and even the level of water in ganga and emna had been rising right so because of this yes the people who are present in this areas they need to know whether their area comes under which alert so that they can download this flood forecast app in the play store so that they can see whether there will be the alert which is given to those areas or not where they wherever they are living so that they can go with living of that place for the temporary period so that they can save their life and as well as property so this topic is important from your science and technology and which comes under your gs paper 3 so these are the topics now you are going to have a detailed discussion in this lecture so please don't skip the video so watch from first to last so that you will be getting lot of interesting points and interesting facts regarding the current affairs which are happening around us 
and if you are new to this Rathors IS Academy so subscribe to this Rathors IS Academy so that you can get lot of interesting and lot of informational videos in the future okay so the first topic is about the gaps in birds and deaths registration amendment act so this topic is at most important and there's a high chance of getting question in your mains so here this article is talking about birds and deaths registration amendment act so this is amendment right so amendment means nothing but change so this is the change to which act so which is the original act so original act is the registration of birds and deaths act of 1969 and this amendment act of 2023 so which is making some changes to already presented act already the act which is present in india and we came with that act in year 1969 that is the registration of birds and deaths act so what is this act talks about this 1969 act which talks about compulsory registration should be done for both birth and as well as for the deaths so if there is any birth and if there is any deaths yes we have to go for compulsory registration under uniform law across our country and actually this amendment act which seeks to amend this uh, registration of birth and death act of 1969 and finally it had been passed by the parliament that is in the both the houses and even president he gave sorry she gave assent to this bill and finally it became an act now so if you're talking about some facts regarding the original act that is registrations of birth and deaths act of 1969 so this act which provides for regulation and registration of births and death So the registration of birth and deaths which falls under concurrent list. So if we are talking about Schedule Seven, so Schedule Seven of Indian Constitution which says about three list. So we have central list, we have state list, and we have concurrent list. So regarding this central list, so central government have the power to make the laws in the subjects which are present in this central list. so if you see in the state list the state have the jurisdiction or state have the power to make laws on the subject which comes under the state list but in this case of concurrent list so both state government and central government they have the power to make the laws on the subject which comes under this concurrent list so unfortunately here registration of birth and deaths which falls under this concurrent list so that it is giving power for both the state government and as well as central government to make laws on this subject right so this is one important prelims waste fact that is the registration of births and deaths which comes under which list that is concurrent list of schedule 7 of indian constitution so what are the key features of this act so first one it is talking about digital birth certificate nowadays so we are not having the paper but we are focusing on the digital right because of promotion of digital india program so here this uh, act which introduces the concept of digital birth certificate so they are going to serve as a comprehensive document for multiple purposes so for multiple purposes so this uh, digital birth certificate can be accepted and it means it also uh, talks about aadhar linkage so aadhar details of parents and informants to birth certificates there is a linkage between the parents aadhar card and as well as the birth certificate of their child and even there is also increased scope of aadhar inclusion to various reporting authorities for example the medical officers jailers and managers of institutions so over all these uh, things yes now here the aadhar card of parent which became the mandatory and this act which also says that we have to come up with a centralized database so this centralized database it is going to manage birth and as well as death records and this will be helpful for facilitating efficient service delivery and even it will be helpful for maintaining of accurate up to date information so if you are having the online database and if you are entering the dates dates and as well as births so that we will be having accurate 
and as well as you will be having up to date information and apart from this birth certificate if you see this centralized database so it will also update the national population register that is npr and as well as ration cards and even property registrations so these all are included under this act so what are the possible benefits the first one is you are going to have the central database or centralized database so it will enhance administrative efficiency so it will be enhancing administrative efficiency and it will be also going to provide reliable and unified source of information and citizens they will also have the experience regarding the various services like so even if you want to join your children in the schools you are asking nowadays a birth certificate right even in the government jobs also they are asking this birth certificate so because of this yes what happens to so citizens they will experience streamlined access to the various services like education institutions even for the government jobs private jobs passports etc so they here now birth certificate which is made as a mandatory and next one is so this bill also aligns with india's digital transformation efforts and is also reflecting the commitment to modernize administrative processes for the improved citizen services so these are the some possible benefits so what are the cause of the concerns yes because of this digital certificate so it is also posing a conflict with constitutional rights for example so if a person who is not having this uh, a uh, birth certificate they are not going to get access to the education so because of this right to education has been undermined and even whenever they are disclosing the certificate it is also it is also leading to the conflict with the right to privacy as you all know that right to privacy it is a fundamental right so it is declared by our honorable supreme court in ks puttaswamy judgment in ks puttaswamy judgment supreme court said that yes right to privacy is a fundamental right right and next one here is so this act which also had a debate about the striking balance between leveraging technology for administrative efficiency and safeguarding citizens right to privacy and it is also opposing the grounds of transparency so here there is no proper approach regarding the data collection and as well as usage of data and there is also lack of access to the digital platforms because of this that will be also creating potential disparities in accessing the services and this bill also focusing on the provisions of justice juvenile act of 2015 and other relevant legislations but it is not following according to the provisions of this juvenile justice act so this is also one cause of concern so these are the some important concerns regarding this act so now let us see the next topic it is about digital data protection law so this article is very important from your gs paper 2 and you can expect both prelims and also mains question from this topic so now let us try to see this topic as i said so this article which is focusing on the digital personal data protection act of 2023 so after years of going back and forth so we are coming forward and we are going back we are coming forward we are going back to pass data protection bill in india and finally and finally in 2023 we came up with this data protection law in india actually so this data protection law has been recommended by sri krishna committee in 2017 itself from 2017 onwards our government is continuously trying to pass this data protection bill and finally now we have this digital personal data protection act so if you are talking about what is a personal data so personal data is the information so through which we can identify a person or an individual so such data is called as personal data and the businesses as well as government entities they process personal data for the delivery of goods and services so i want to say one thing that uh, that is very much uh, uh, very much excited me here is so actually i ordered lipstick on just herbs website 
so actually i will not use my personal phone number every anywhere so i will be using my husband's uh, number whenever i am do any order on online sites so whenever i i gave my husband number so all the details of my husband even even with the house number and uh, the address of uh, our house also came on that website so finally i was like so how a phone number gave all the details of my husband i don't know so even i didn't type my husband names also but just i gave the phone number so entire details of my husband they appeared on the screen and they filled in the uh, check box okay check out box so i was very much surprised so i thought that yes because of this only our government tried a lot to come up with this uh, data protection bill so i thought like that right so actually if you're talking about the processing of this personal data so whenever the personal data is uh, uh, processing here so we can understand the preference of individuals so actually once i ordered uh, lipsticks on this uh, just hubs website so whenever i am opening the google so i will be getting advertisements regarding the lipsticks which are offered by the different brands so this is called as targeted advertisements okay so here whatever the personal data that you are filling in the online site so whenever you are clicking save then the data will be saved here so that personal data can be used for the processing and by the processing of that personal data you can understand customization targeted advertisements and they will be also developing some recommendations of others other other sites etc which is seen so if you're talking about this processing of uh, personal data it may also aid law enforcement and unchecked processing may have adverse implications because it will be also having the negative impact on the privacy of individuals because privacy is a fundamental right right so here because of this whenever we are going for this processing of personal data without consent so it will be also sometimes lead to harmful financial losses and the loss of reputation as well as profiling also so because of all these things yes we need data protection law in our country so if you are talking about the highlights of this uh, act so this act it is talking about the processing of digital personal data so whenever the data which is collected online in india and as well as outside india also also we have to go for uh, storing of the data and the personal data may be processed only after a consent which is given so this article which is talking about the problem regarding the consent itself okay so consent may not be required for specific legitimate uses for example if there is any voluntary sharing of data by individual or processing by the state for permits licenses benefits and services so these will be exempted so if you're talking about data fiduciaries that means organizations you are collecting the data so they have to maintain the accuracy of data and they have to keep the data secure and they have to delete the data once the purpose had been met and this act which also says that certain rights of individuals including the right to obtain information and to seek correction and to erasure and as well as grievance redressal mechanism so all these things you have talked in this act and if you are talking about the exemptions so central government may exempt government agencies regarding the applications of this provisions of this act in the interest of some specific grounds like security of the state to maintain public order and as well as prevention of offences so we're talking about the consent so what exactly consent is so whenever any person who is providing his personal data so we have to give that consent like so i myself aware about everything and i giving this uh, consent to use the data so like that so it is like a notice okay which is given by a person to use the data to the organization so here a notice must be given before seeking the consent so notice should contain the details about the personal data to be collected and the purpose of processing of that such data so if we are talking about this consent so this consent can be removed at any point of time so consent will not be required for the legitimate uses for example if there is any specified purpose for which data have been provided by an individual voluntarily so there is no need of consent and whenever there is a provision of benefit for the service by the government also there is no need of consent and for the medical emergency also there is no need of consent and even for the employment opportunities 
so if any children who is below 18 years of age the guardian will be going to give the consent okay so if we talk about what are the key issues regarding this act so exemption of data processing by state on the grounds like national security so it may leads to data collection data processing and retention of the data so because of this it violates right to privacy which is a fundamental right and as well as this act does not regulate the risk of harms arising from the processing of personal data and this act does not grant the right to data portability also it is not talking about right to be forgotten to digital principle and this act which also allows the transfer of personal data outside india so this is also one cause of concern and even there is no mechanism regarding adequate evaluation of data protection standards in the country so this is also one important cause of concern right so these are some important things that you have to remember regarding this topic and next topic it is about fighting stereotypes so this article which is focusing on gender stereotypes so this topic is at most important from your society and you can expect a mains based question from here but not prelims okay so now let us see what does this article try to say so here recently cji released handbook on gender stereotypes so cji is nothing but our dy chandrachud sir he released 30 page book and it is talking about gender stereotypes and how to address this gender stereotypes in judicial disclosure that means during the proceedings in the court so this book which is intended for the use by judges and as well as legal practitioners that means lawyers and this book which highlighted highlights the gender neutral and accurate language in the legal proceedings so it also emphasizes that using of outdated language and stereotypes which hampers which decreases the progress of equality rights envisioned by the two present in our indian constitution so because of this the first step taken from the judiciary itself so if we talk about this gender stereotyping what exactly is this so it is nothing but over generalization of characteristics differences and attributes of certain group based on their gender so the gender stereotypes they create widely accepted biases about certain characteristics or traits and gender stereotypes they are dangerous because they can cause to might be disoriented in their perceptions okay and even this uh, gender stereotypes will also leads to discrimination in the society and it will also leads to unequal or it will also create unequal and unfair treatment okay based on gender that is sex right so why why cji came up with this handbook release so our cji release this handbook to address and to rectify gender stereotypes which is present in the judicial disclosure that is during the uh, during the judicial proceedings yes normally there will be using of the language so this language which is showing that yes there is gender stereotypes an important goal it is to promote equal rights for all individual regardless of their gender and we need to emphasize on need for accurate and respectful language in the legal proceedings and the handbook it also aims to assist the judges and the legal practitioners in recognizing and understanding and eliminating the gender stereotypes from the judicial disclosure so even this gender stereotype which educates about significance of language in shaping perceptions and also even in ensuring constitutional values of equality so if we're talking about what is the role of language so always language is one of the medium right to express our views our thoughts so here language plays a very important role so even when i am taking the class if i am using a rude language so will you watch the video no right so if you have visited any doctor and whenever doctor he 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 talk to you in the rude language so will again will you go to that doctor no right so because of this language plays a very important role in the law and as well as society so language is very essential in the law and society because it conveys the values it conveys the values and intentions of law makers and as well as judges so because of this your handbook which says that 
we have to uphold or we have to we should uh, focus on the need of accurate language in the legal disclosure especially to safeguard constitutional principles like equality justice etc so this is the crux of this article so now let us try to see next topic it is about pm vishwakarma scheme and this topic is important from your gs paper 2 under governance so here already you know that in prime minister uh, so our prime minister in his prime minister's independence speech so he made a note on this pm vishwakarma scheme and finally this scheme also approved by cabinet and the outlay of this scheme it is around 13 crore rupees with a total of about uh, uh, a total amount of interest rate is 5 percentage and this loans will be given under two tranches okay so in this way here artisans they are now they are now have an access to get economic boost they are going to get the loans so if we talk about why why we need this scheme so because these artisans you are facing lot of challenges because they are not getting a uh, normally cheap credit they are not getting so there is also lack of patronage and even these people they do not have access to the wider market places and even there is undervaluation for the art uh, for the arts you are making and there is also the lack of access to the formal credit also so because of all these things the next generation people they are not get motivated to do this work so because of this too to save our dying arts and art crafts government came up with this step now so we're talking about the objective of this scheme so this scheme which aims to improve the quality and as well as the reach of the products and services of artisans right so if you're talking about who are the targeted beneficiaries under this scheme so there are about eight traditional trades such as carpenter boat maker armor blacksmith harmer and toolkit maker locksmith goldsmith potter sculpture stone barber cobbler mason or basket broom or coir weaver traditional doll and toy makers and garland maker washerman tiler fishing nets fishing nets maker all these will be covered under this scheme so what are the key points so first one is under this pm vishwakarma scheme so they are going to get a certificate and as well as id card so that will support about rupees 1 lakh and 2 lakh rupees uh, 1 lakh will be given the first tranche and the second tranche 2 lakh rupees will be given and about the total here is 3 lakh rupees and that to the rate of interest 5 percentage very very less and this scheme will be will be providing skill upgradation and as well as toolkit incentives and digital transactions and even marketing support will be given by government to these artisans and there will be two types of skilling programs like basic and advanced okay and under this even stipend of rupees 500 per day will also be given to the beneficiaries and they'll also get the support of around 15,000 to buy a modern tools or modern instruments so what is this vishmakarma jayanti so this day which marks auspicious celebrations of the birth of lord vishwakarma so he was the son of lord brahma so the factory and store owners they perform pujas to uh, to this vishwakarma on this day and they will ask lord favor for the success in their respective professions so because of this on this day here we are celebrating this and uh, so if you see here this vishwakarma jayanti which is celebrated on 17th september every year that is in the next month we are going to celebrate this so this is about this topic and now let us try to see the next topic title says now drones to monitor progress quality of assets produced at this mg narega work sites so this article is at most important and please let me know your opinion like so how this drones can be useful and whether this drones can be successful or not so please tell me your opinion and please let me know also some other applications of usage of drones. So if you see context why it is in use. So to increase surveillance at the work sites of this MG Narega. So our Union Ministry of Rural Development which is implementing agency of this scheme. So they are using, you are going to use in these drones to 
monitor the progress and as well as quality of assets which are produced under this scheme. So we're talking about further more details. It says that according to standard operating procedures, so this standard operating procedure is recently issued by the ministry. So it says that the drones will be used for four type of monitoring. So first one is for the survey purpose. And next one is for inspection purpose. And third one is for impact assessment purpose. And fourth one is special inspection in case of any complaints. So in these four purpose, we can use these drones. So there are several complaints about the corruption in MG Naregas, right? For example, the machines are used in these places. They are substandard machines. And here people, they are getting wages without doing the work and work is uh, taken uh, work is done beyond the time period which is allocated like that so especially for the monitoring purpose so we are using drones now so actually this engineering scheme which is very much helpful to attain sustainable development goals like no poverty one and uh, second sustainable uh, development goal is two that is zero hunger third one is to maintain the good health and uh, well-being and fourth one is quality education. Fifth one is that can also promote gender equality. And next one is we are going to provide the decent work and economic growth. And next one is industry innovation and infrastructure purpose also. So we can use this scheme. And next one is reduced inequalities. So these are all the sustainable development goals. So we can be achieved by using this scheme. So if you see some facts regarding this MG Narega scheme, so it is one of the largest work guarantee programs in the world. So it had been launched in 2005 by Ministry of Rural and Rural Development. And under this scheme here, 100 days of guarantees employment will be given in financial year. And especially it is regarding unskilled work, unskilled manual work. And as of the data, from 2022 to 23 that is recent data it says that around 15.4 crore active workers are working under this scheme and it is also very helpful for achieving the legal right to work because unlike the earlier guarantee schemes of work so this act which aims to address the causes of chronic poverty through the rights based framework and at least one third of workers here should be women so that we are also focusing on women empowerment and under this act so the people they are going to get minimum wages and it's also demand driven scheme so the most important part of this mg narega design it is legally backed guarantee okay so here if they are going and if they are enrolling themselves uh, with the gram panchayat so within 15 days they have to get the employment so if they are not getting means they will be also getting getting unemployment allowances from the government right so in this way this scheme is very very helpful and next topic it is about flood forecast app launched by water commission so i want to give you another homework you have to do some research regarding what is this cwc that is central water commission so please let me know about some facts regarding this cwc in the comment box don't forget about this and if you see context, it says that the Central Water Commission launched an app. So this app is called as Flood Watch. So here this Flood Watch, which is helpful in the forecasting of the chances of floods and it can be done in a day advance so that you will be having enough time to take measures. Right. So if you see details, so this app, which is easily available in the Google Play Store. So this app, which has a map of India with the colored circles at water stations across the country and it will be giving the details regarding the current risk of flooding so green circle means nothing but normal yellow means above normal orange is severe and red is extreme so clicking on the circle which shows the water level in the station at the danger level and as well as warming level as well so it is also having voice enabled prompt also so even though if you are not able to see that so even with the voice also you can listen that right so this data which will be provided based on satellite data analysis and mathematical modeling and real-time monitoring as well so this is a flood index you can see green means normal and yellow means water safety statements means unsafe conditions and but flooding is not expected and in this yellow also we will be having two yellows 
that one is flood outlook statement that shows about every notice of potential for flooding and orange means the flooding is possible in specific areas for example municipalities emergency services and individual land owners will be affected and they should prepare and red means yes already occurring of flooding which is seen right so these are the some important flood forecasting and warning which you can see in the app so these are some important articles that happened in our today's Hindu newspaper. So I want to make a small announcement. So we in Rathor Science, we came up with this map that is main science writing program. And this program, it is for one year. And here we are going to give you the detailed schedule for the next one year, what you have to read on which day. So that we will be giving you daily one question on Sunday, you will be having a or case study practice. So you need to write answer for that question and you have to send your answer in PDF format to our mail so that there will be correction or evaluation will be done. So apart from that, apart from that here, so we are also having the live discussion and we are also having and we are also having one to one mentorship sessions and live doubt clearing session and discussion on the answers of the questions etc that will be there and we are also going to provide model answer for each and every question so that you can have enough content to write an answer especially to move your hand okay especially to come out of inertia regarding answer writing and we will be always pushing you to write mains answers and mains answer skills are very important to clear this UPS examination so if you want to really clear this UPS, you have to focus on this main answer writing and come and let us uh, please join in this main answer writing program and the cost of this course is 8200 rupees for one year so here if you can't pay this amount in one go you can pay in installment also so try to join so this is very very useful course okay so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so before that if you have any queries so please call me on this number 8074765513 okay so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today hindu date is august 18 and today is friday so first topic it is about chandrayaan propulsion lander module separate so here this article which says that we already launched this chandrayaan 3 and we are going to expect the landing on this uh, moon surface on 23rd august and actually now what happened lander modules which had been separated so here you can see this image that after separation of the two modules a series of complex braking maneuvers will be executed and this is going to facilitate the soft landing on the surface of the moon and we have to wait and watch and the next topic is about now drones to monitor progress quality of assets produced at mg narega work sites so i discuss this topic and if you move on you can see article here india head of chinese ponzi scam held by eow of odisha so we know that in odisha there is a ponzi scheme that happened and it is around thousand uh, thousand thousand crore here so this article which is talking about the ponzi scheme and here you have to see what is this ponzi scheme it is nothing but chain system and here recently this ponzi scheme happened in odisha and lot of people invested like more than two lakh people they invested in this uh, ponzi scheme it is regarding cryptocurrency okay and if you move on in this page number six you can see indian standard in niger cross border entrance benin so here what happens uh, what happened here is in niger so there is a issue regarding military coup that happened and even here in this Niger, Indians were present, especially Keralites. So these people, they have been now standard and we have to wait and see. So how these people will be get back to India by the government. And if you move on, you can leave the spotlight, Metro Plus. In this editorial page, I discussed this article regarding the gaps in birth and death registration act. I discussed this topic regarding gender stereotyping. I discussed this article regarding PM Vishwakarma and as well as data protection law. So I covered almost all these editorials. And there is one more article that is this. Is there any need to replace IPC, CRPC and Indian Evidence Act? So already many times we had discussion regarding this topic. So it is left to you to do, to do this article. And here you can see one image. So this uh, image it is about a tree struggling in the flood waters of Ganga in Haridwar. 
and actually now ganga which is uh, facing this floods and you have to know here like which are the tributaries of ganga so which are the right bank and left bank tributaries of river ganga so please let me know in the comment box and if you move on here you can see one interesting topic that is how made in heaven disturbs conventional ideas about marriages so in india marriage it is one institution actually uh, our uh, grandfathers or grandmothers says that yes marriages are made in heaven but now what happened there is a trend of love marriages are happening so this article says that how this love marriages are changing this conventional ideas about marriage because of this love marriages now there is also increased incidence of divorce right so we have to think about this article and please let me know your opinion regarding the love marriage and next topic is president momo launches warship vidyagiri so this article is also very important it is the last in the series of uh, three project 17a that is a series of three and this project 17a that is alpha frigates actually it is built by indian navy at kolkata based garden research ship builders and engineers so actually it is very important because we are moving towards enhancing india's maritime capabilities and our president said that this launch will also helps towards achieving the goal of aatmanirbhar bharat abhiyan through this indigenous shipping also okay so here you have to know this vidyagiri was developed and it reflects the country's commitments to self reliance and as well as technological advancement and next one is cji asked if petitioners want supreme court to access government's wisdom in repealing article 370 or not so go through this article once and if you move forward in this page number 16 you can see this article regarding the flood forecast app that is flood watch i discussed and next one is with huge allocation technology will transform judiciary so actually you have to know what are the problems or issues faced by indian judiciary and you have to see how technology can helpful to come out of those challenges so it is also your work and please let me know what are the gaps or what are the issues faced by indian judiciary and how this technology can be helpful and next topic is kalka shimla heritage railway line will be out of service for some weeks so here you have to see this is a unesco world heritage site okay so already we discussed some facts regarding this kalka shimla heritage railway line and if you open your nitin singhania also you can get some details regarding this railway line and the business page you can see supply shocks not over inflation to be well above 6% in quarter 2 so here because of el nino so we are going to expect that there will be further more increased in prices of goods in the market especially increase in the food basket price and next one is retail inflation to fall below 7% in august so we have to wait and watch and next one is india said to consider russia's wheat import to rebate to cool price so because of unseasonal rainfall that led to the increasing of price of wheat because of less production of wheat in india so because of this yes we have to consider the wheat imports from russia so these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so by this i'm concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture so if you really enjoyed this lecture so please hit the like button and don't forget to share this video to your friends and please do subscribe to ratur science academy thank you so much